Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where we are currently putting this station core in orbit around Duna. Of course Kerbin's right over there. We're on our way over to Duna and we are just going to warp on over. Fantastic. So we're just going to circularize once we get to Duna and the real question is how's our antenna going to do? <laughs> we don't have an antenna on this thing so we might have to do things a bit more manually than we're usually usually planning to do that's okay we can we can control this exactly as we need to can we thrust limit while we are while we don't have a connection i think we can dunhat should be in theory capable of doing that wait a second dunhat is a scientist i thought that dunhat was an engineer <laughs> okay it's fine it's fine. We can send a different engineer out, and we could even send a, a rescue mission for Dunhat. Apparently, Dunhat forged his qualifications, so <laughs> that's going to be exciting. In fact, that could be our second module that we send out. We could send out just a module that brings an engineer, refuels using this fuel, and then brings Dunhat home. That could work, actually. That really, really could work. But here we are popping back over to Duna. We're loading into the Sphere of Influence now. I'm not sure. There's Duna. Hi, Duna. We're going to lock to the node here, and we're just going to warp forward a little bit. We're just looking to circularize here. So 10 seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. Cool. We will physics warp this. And it looks like we're not going to be able to, like, set up additional maneuvers beyond this one, unfortunately. At least not until we get a little closer to Duna. So we need to slow down here and get this circularization done. Which is, of course, absolutely no problem. And from there, basically the apoapsis periapsis should be the ascending-descending node. Or very close to it. So we're just going to get all of that inclination stuff done. We're going to match planes with Ike, which is zero degrees. That should be fine. Because we can't target this anymore. Or I suppose we could just use our advanced orbital info here and target the inclination this way. That might be the better way to do it. But I think Ike would work. If we set this as our target, yeah, we can see the ascending descending nodes are going to be here. 11.1 .1 degrees, so it's like a 0.1 degree inclination. We can use this as an indicator. So that'll be fine. Here we go, slowing down enough. We've got about 20 seconds of burn left here. Let's come out of the time warp, and we're just going to stop our burn right about... Now we'll do. I guess we can do something kind of like that. That's good enough. Okay, so at this ascending node, I'm assuming we can't add a maneuver. Oh, we can add a maneuver. Interesting. We're not connected. I wouldn't have expected to be able to add a maneuver here. That might be a bug caused by one of our mods. I'm going to actually delete this maneuver. I don't think we should be able to add a maneuver when we're not connected. Okay, so we're just going to head over to, I believe... We want to go to normal minus? No, we want to go to normal plus, I think. So we're going to head over to normal plus. This is all things that we can do without a connection. I'm going to assume that there was some sort of a bug snafu here, but we're going to make our way around to about here, slightly before this ascending node. We're going to keep an eye on this inclination number. There we go. And we're just going to see how this ends up going. We know where the ascending node is, so we can we can do this without a maneuver. That's not a big deal. So around now-ish, I want to... Okay, that's going the wrong way. So we need to bring this around to anti-normal. Good to know. So around we go to anti-normal. We are a little ways away from the ascending node here still, like an hour away. I'm now going to warp over to the ascending node. Just a little bit closer in here. Cool. And we can see, yeah, there's a 0.1 differential here. That might just be a rounding error or 
Ike might be at a 0.1 inclination. I'm not sure which. We're just going to bring this right on around. We're watching that ascending node. We're probably only going to do part of this burn here. And now I'm going to warp forward to the ascending node again. There we go. And now we're going to get the other part of the burn done. So the other 3.8 degrees now. Two degrees. One degree. And just this last little bit of burn here. Two, one. Ignoring this at this point. I think that's probably the best we're going to get here at this moment. With maneuvers, we'd be able to get it a little better, but we'll call that good. So for right now, we want to hop over to Retrograde. I'm going to unset Ike as the target. This is good enough for our inclination for the time being. We can think about changing that a little bit later on. But yeah, this is good enough for now. So we're going to head over to Retrograde, and let's bring this Apoapsis down to a million meters, which is our target orbit. So because we're not connected, we're going to continue to do this bring our periapsis down rather we're going to continue to do this without maneuvers so seven million six million five million four million three watching for encounters here this is an awkward encounter i have no idea what we're actually at here oh this is really awkward That is kind of infuriating, actually, that we have an encounter all along here. Okay. We're going to flip it back around. And we're going to bring this back up. And we're going to have to try to estimate this. So we can see here this gravity assist is probably an impact, actually. But it would fling us back out of the system right now. Okay, we're going to have to base it on this periapsis. What happens if we toss some radial in here? Again, this would be easier with maneuvers, but since we don't have a connection, I'm not doing maneuvers. Anti-radial. Okay, let's flop it around to anti-radial here. We can see our inclination has crept back up a little bit. I'm not too concerned about that right now. Okay, there we go. And we're just going to burn here until this periapsis is back up to being about a million. There we go. Let's double check here. Okay, this seems fine. We're not going to impact approximately a million. It's going to be a bit awkward. <laughs> we're going to warp over to here. That's in about five days. So inward we go to Duna. Two more days. And here's our encounter with Ike. Fantastic. Now we're going to warp straight on out of here. We don't care about getting any science here at Ike. We don't have any to get, for the record. So we're just going to pass right on through. Goodbye, Ike. You made this far more awkward than it needed to be, but we got there in the end. And now we're heading up towards the apoapsis. So Ike lifted us up in our orbit here, but we compensated at the periapsis. So at the periapsis here, we're going to warp to about... Yeah, we're going this way. Okay, so we're going to warp to about here. And then we're going to flip around to retrograde. Now that we're here where we want approximately where we want to be. We'll probably fine tune that in a little bit, but we'll flip around to retrograde here. Our inclination has come up slightly as well. That's, I guess, fine? Yeah, we can work with that. So we're just going to bring our apoapsis on down. And I'm okay with the periapsis falling a bit here too. So we're going to burn here until our periapsis is at 1 million meters. Or our apoapsis is also at 1 million meters. Whichever happens first. But I think the periapsis will get there first. 
And then we'll just have to do another retrograde burn at the periapsis, which is fine. We're circularizing, but we're not quite there. And we'll call that good. So at this apoapsis, we'll go ahead and warp there. Cool. We'll just burn this down a little bit further, circularizing about like that. I'm going to warp up to the apoapsis again here. I want to get this a little bit more accurate. We're still 22 kilometers off on the periapsis. So let's warp forward a little bit closer to the apoapsis here, about T minus 10 seconds or so. Okay, about here. Ooh, okay. We're going to have to get a little closer than that. I mean, that bypassed the apoapsis, but that's actually kind of good. We actually kind of want this. This is raising up the apoapsis. Oh, we're facing the wrong way. <laughs> that would do it. Let's bring it on over this way. We could do a radial burn, actually. Radial is an interesting option here. So we'd want, I think, radial minus. Let's see what we, what we get out of this. Going down and going up. This is the direction that we want. Cool. Okay, now that we've passed the periapsis, though, so we want to move to about here if we're going to do that radial burn. So we're going to move to about here and radially burn it. Uh, that's definitely a little awkward. Okay. Let's just bring this up to one million. This would be a lot easier with maneuvers, to be clear. We still don't have a connection, though. So we're just going to bring that up a little bit more. 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, and let's bring this ever so slightly down. Okay, I'm going to thrust limit us here. Down to half a percent thrust. Cool. Exactly 1 million meters at the periapsis. Cool. Now we're going to warp around to here. And we're going to need to be retrograde. This is going to modify this a little bit. So we're, we're not going to be perfect. But I want to get this more circularized than it is, for sure. And we're definitely going to have to bring a communications dish out with us. No doubt about that. So that's fine. We are going to warp forward a little bit further here. Till we're about five seconds to the periapsis. So about here-ish. Oh, we're not pointing retrograde. That's exciting. Let's make our way to retrograde. There we go. And we're going to bring this right on in. Okay, half a percent. This is going to take a bit. Let's unthrust limit this. Well, bring it up to about 4% thrust. Even that's a little on the low side. Let's bring it up to about 40% thrust. Yeah, that's dropping, but I'm not too concerned about that. Okay. This is pretty close. This is good enough. Inclination-wise, we can pop over to here or so. So we'd warp to about here. Only 100x time warp. That's kind of exciting. And we do normal velocity down, right? So let's come out of that time warp for the moment. Let's position for the burn here. There we go. And let's head on over this direction. Because I'm looking at our inclination direction here. I'm pretty sure that our node would be about here. I would find this with maneuvers, but we can't do that. So for the moment, that's fine. I'm going to stop here. Yes. 0 0.2. 0 0.1. 0 0.0. Good. We'll call this good. Very, very close. So that will absolutely do. Okay, so we've got our Duna Station core here. Let's hop on back to the Space Center and let's bring up an engineer. 
and we're going to need a craft that can get there, refuel at the station, then return back to Kerbin and bring the scientist. We're going to swap around our Kerbals. So that seems absolutely fine. So we're going to need to hire ourselves a engineer here. We can go with Tanley. Sure. And we're going to hop into the VAB. We're going to base this design off of what we had. What, what we had to start with there. But we obviously need a lot less fuel. So we're going to go for the station core. But we are not bringing along any of this. So these side tanks go away. We're not bringing any of these. So that all goes away. We're not going to bring a cupola module or the cargo storage units. So those are going to go away. We're going to instead be bringing something along the lines of a Mark I command pod, really. It's going to be a little bit small. And we'll go for the white variant to match some of our other stuff that we've got going on. We're going to want to have a docking port up here. So we'll put that in. That is going to be in coupling. So we're going to do a Clampatron docking port like... Okay, I don't like this. <laughs> we're going to go for the Mark 1-3 command pod. It's heavier, but it's bigger. We're only going to bring one passenger with it. So we're going to do that. We're going to put in the Clampatron docking port here. As far as return goes, we're just going to be returning the module, I think. I'd like to have some RCS on here. We'll get to that in a moment. We're going to put on a 2.5 meter heat shield here. We'll need some parachutes. So a pair of drogues and one to two main shoots should be sufficient. I'm just going to do a singular main shoot here on the back. Like that. That should be enough to get us down to the ground safely on Kerbin. So that's fine. There's our delivery system and our return system set up. So we're going to put in a decoupler here. This will be a TD-25 decoupler. Then we're going to attach all of this. We're going to put in our photovoltaic panels. I'm only going to put two of these here. I would like down below this decoupler to put in some RCS here. So, we'll go for monoprop. Size-wise, that's more than enough monoprop. And we'll go for something along the lines of eight of these guys. Cool. But I want to get them to be a bit like this. Maybe even mounting them up here or something. Yeah, something like this. That should do the trick there. These are not connected. This does not need to be 8x symmetry. Just... No, stop it. Undo that. There we go. Does not need to be 8x symmetry. It needs to be 6x symmetry, and this connects here. Now, we probably don't need these external SRBs. We'll ditch those and save some cash. This is still wildly overkill, right? But the idea here is this is going to get us to Duna. We'll refuel there and make our way back. This will probably have enough to do both, but we'll see. Like, realistically, it probably will. We need to bring an antenna, though. Two antennas. We need two antennas here. So what kind of antennas do we want? 2G, 15G... We don't really need a relay antenna, but we might want to bring relay antennas instead. Or one relay antenna. So one relay antenna to be attached to the station once we're there. And then one communitron for this vehicle. So something like this. Now, this is not intended to remain at the station, right? So we're going to not be... Actually, we could bring... A pilot here. If we brought a pilot, we would ditch the communitron, because we're planning on bringing this back, right? We could ditch the communitron. We would also end up ditching the remote guidance unit, because Jeb can do all of that. He can pilot it. 
That does seem reasonable. We're planning on bringing this right on back, so that's fine. We could actually put the relay antenna up here and then move it over before we dock. But I don't think we'll do that in case we, for some reason, can't move this thing. I'm pretty sure we can move it, but we'll place it over here instead. So in that case, we would end up bringing... Valentina technically has slightly less XP. We'd bring Tanley for sure, who's intended to remain out at the station. And then we'd bring, like, Stainy. Yeah, that seems okay. The one thing I don't like here is the offset mass by this relay antenna. I think we'd be better off having that mass on this side. And then putting our photovoltaic panels like this. Otherwise, I think this is ready to go. This is, of course, the Duna Station Transit Shuttle. Cool. So we'll save that, and I think we're ready to launch this monstrosity. It's less of a monstrosity than some monstrosities, but it's still fairly monstrosity-ish. We do need to do our checks on staging, though. Our staging looks broken. So we've got this. That's all good. Then that and that, yes. But this decoupler needs to go up here instead. So that goes there, and then the drogue shoots go here. Cool. So that looks good. We're not going to need an antenna for the way back. All of these guys are fine without their Ketflix subscription, so it should be okay. They'll have it on the way there. On the way back, they're going to have to read books. It's not ideal, but this is the mission that they signed up for, even if they didn't read the fine print. We're going to launch this. And we're going to head out to Duna. Now, because we have the antenna, we're not going to do the fancy advanced transit with MechJeb. We're going to do this the old-fashioned way and see how this goes. But this should be fine. There should be no problems here. We should have way more than enough fuel to get to Duna. We'll refuel at Duna. And then we'll just head on home. After we do our transfer, we'll attach on this antenna. We will move Tanley into the vehicle and bring back our scientist. Sounds great. Throttle up. We don't need SAS on. We need kill rot on. And off we go. So the reason I put it on this side was so that the drag and the mass is pulling us over towards the horizon. For the record. That's, that's why I moved this over to be on this side. Cool. Cool. So we're just going to go up for a bit here, keeping an eye on that apoapsis height. We have a KER on this. I guess the command pod counts as a KER. Interesting. We have a lot of speed here. We should definitely start getting some horizontal speed. No doubt about that. We are moving vertically. So we're going to start heading on over here. We don't want to move too quickly. We need to keep our prograde marker within view here. After all. But this looks quite good thus far. Valentina with the very, very aggressive as ascent trajectory here. Okay. Let's hold off on it a bit. We can see our apoapsis height is already quite up there. This is like almost a mech jeb style ascent. Almost. Okay. Let's, at this point, just make our way over to horizontal velocity up and hope we don't tumble. The gimbling should be okay with this. Cool. So, I see that we're already at 105, 105 kilometers for our apoapsis. We're going to have to do a pretty hefty circularization burn, but that's to be expected. Certainly not absolutely ideal here in how we're going to get this done, but it, it does get the job done, so that's reasonably fine. The timing here is, I think, not perfect. We'll just adjust that over slightly like that. Yep, that's much better. And we'll lock to our node here. Cool. We're about to hit space. That was very much a MechJeb style ascent. Okay. Except I think we got a little bit more vertical speed. We'll extend out these solar panels, of course. Cool. 
We do have a little bit of rocking going on here, but I'm not too concerned about that. There is going to be some wiggling here, I think. But we did reduce... Did we reduce the number of reaction wheels up here? I'm not convinced we actually did, but this is fine for now. We're going to warp forward. We've got about a minute until our circularization burn. Cool. Three, two, one, and zero. So off we go here, looking to circularize. We're going to burn off the last little bit of this external fuel, and our center core here hasn't burned a single ounce of fuel just yet. So that's going to honestly get us most of the way to Duna, if not all the way. Cool. So we ditch off all of those outer cores, our very heavy lift there. And let's just get ourselves into orbit. Only a couple hundred more meters per second to go here. We can definitely see some weakness down here in this joint. I'm not shocked about that. That's what we expected. Cool. So here we go, entering orbit. Excellent. We're technically in orbit now, but let's get that last little bit done. There we go. That'll do. So from here, we're going to just make our way out to Duna, but it is time to put a cut in here. So next episode, we're going to head to Duna, dock up, and start heading back. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, James, Shadow Wolf, and Lohan80, Rogue Corvid, Kentogan, Andy Magar, Spartan News, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Soccerman12 UK, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video, and as always, I will see you all next time.